hockey romance, the coldness of the ice, but the heat of the love. I really wanted to try it out this winter. I've selected five top rated hockey books. I'm going to share them with you today. Hi, my name's B. Welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance, because nobody in one of the five hockey books I'm about to mention keeps waking me up at night because Santa's come back. Way back in September, I enjoyed football romance so very much that I thought we have to do more sports. So, January, hockey. I couldn't believe though the number of books that I found that were rated four stars and above. It's insane. I had a hard time picking just five. All right, you're gonna see me looking at my computer. I love when people are like, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my device. And I'm like, well, whoever is going, what are they looking at? Why are they looking down? <laughs> I'm not staring at my laundry, looking at whatever's telling me the info I need. <laughs> anyway, let's start with All In Number Two, A Favor for a Favor by Helena Hunting. This got a 4.18 on Goodreads from the New York Times bestselling author of Pucked and A Lie for a Lie, a new standalone romance about trading favors, battling wills, and winning love. So it's the second standalone in the series. When I joined Seattle's NHL expansion team, I thought it was the start of something great, but nothing ever goes the way you expect. Take my introduction to my new neighbor. She came rolling in on the hot mess express at midnight, <laughs> making a racket while she tried to get into my team captain's apartment. Did I mention that he's married to a woman who was definitely not her? This writing is hilarious. Imagine my surprise when I end up with an injury that has me out of the game for weeks and she's the one to offer to help me. I should probably add that she's not the captain's mistress. She's his sexy pastel haired younger sister. So we come up with an arrangement. She rehabs me so that I can get back on the ice sooner and she can add a professional athlete that isn't her brother to her client list. Seems simple enough, as long as I can keep my hands to myself and my hormones in check. This looks really fun. My next offering was brought up to me by several people who said it's their comfort read. It's their go-to hockey romance. When they heard me say I was doing hockey, they were like, you must read this one. I wound up using an audible credit for it. It's by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy, two authors that are like ones to watch in my opinion. I haven't read them yet, but I really have been wanting to. It's called Him and it's the first book in the Him series and it got a 4.28 on Goodreads. Jamie Canning has never been able to figure out how he lost his closest friend. Four years ago, his tattooed, wisecracking, rule-breaking roommate cut him off without an explanation. So what if things got a little weird on the last night of hockey camp? It was just a little drunken foolishness. Nobody died. Ryan Wesley's biggest regret is coaxing his very straight friend into a bet that pushed the boundaries of their relationship. Now with their college teams set to face off at the national championship, he'll finally get a chance to apologize. But all it takes is one look at his longtime crush and the ache is stronger than ever. Jamie has waited a long time for answers, but walks away with only more questions. Can one night of sex ruin a friendship? If not, how about six more weeks of it? Whoa. When Wesley turns up to coach alongside Jamie for one more hot summer at camp, Jamie has a few things to discover about his old friend and a big one to learn about himself. This is hilarious. Warning contains sexual situations, skinny dipping, shenanigans in an SUV, and proof that coming out to your family on social media is a dicey proposition. Okay, here comes one that I've heard so many good things about, Always Only You. It's the Bergman Brothers number two. Everybody's talking about it. It got a 4.03 on Goodreads. It says, get ready for an emotional ride filled with laughter, longing, and a sweet slow burn in this sports romance about love's power, not in spite of difference, but because of it. Wren. The moment I met her, I knew Frankie Zeffirino was someone worth waiting for. Deadpan delivery, secret heart of gold, and a rare one-dimpled smile that makes my knees weak. Frankie has been forbidden since the day she and I became co-workers, meaning waiting has been the name of the game. Besides hockey, that is. I'm a player on the team and she's on staff and as long as we work together dating is off limits but patience has always been my virtue. Frankie won't be here forever. She's headed for bigger better things. I just hope that when she leaves the team and I tell her how I feel she won't want to leave me behind too. And then we have Frankie. I had a problem at work since the day Ren Bergman joined the team. A six foot three hunk of happy with a sunshine smile. Oh I love 
that. I'm a grumbly grump. Oh, less loving that. And his ridiculously good nature drives me nuts. But even I can't entirely ignore that a hot tamale of ginger with icy eyes, the perfect playoff beard, and a body built for sin that he's annoyingly modest about. Before I got wise, I would have tripped over myself to get a guy like Ren. But with my diagnosis, I've learned that I am, I am, to most people in my life, a problem, not a person. Now, opening my heart to anyone, no matter how sweet, is the last thing I'm prepared to do. Always Only You is an opposites attract, forbidden love, sports romance about a nerdy, late-blooming hockey star and his tough cookie co-worker who keeps both her soft side and her autism diagnosis to herself. Complete with a meddling secretary, tantric yoga torture, and a scorching slow burn, the standalone is the second in a series of novels about a Swedish-American family of five brothers, two sisters, and their wild adventures as they each find happily ever after. So I'm going to be honest, and hopefully this isn't oversharing, but I've heard such great things about this, but I've sort of avoided it because both of my boys are on the autism spectrum, and I was a little worried that because autism is very much a part of my life that I wasn't sure I wanted also to read about it. <laughs> I mean, I love to people with autism more than life itself, but sometimes it can be a great source of stress for me. And so I don't know if reading this is going to make me break out in a sweat. Maybe it'll be cathartic. I don't know, but I'm slightly nervous to read it. I'll be honest, but it looks really good. And I've heard such incredible things. Maybe it'll be really neat. Yeah. So we'll see. I'll read it and I'll see. <laughs> okay, so Make It Sweet is my next offering by Kristen Callahan. I have to say, I'm excited about reading another Kristen Callahan. I loved the book, The Game Plan from the Game On series. I really wanna read the rest of those, those are football. But when I saw she did a hockey, I was like, oh, let me try this out. I actually wound up getting this for a couple bucks when they did the big Audible sale. So when I saw this was a hockey book, I thought, oh my gosh, I can add this to my list of potentials and I already bought it. So that's exciting. And it got a 4.0 on Goodreads. It said, life for Emma isn't good. The world knows her as Princess Anya on Dark Castle. Oh, it's probably like Game of Thrones. But then her character gets the axe, literally. The cherry on top is finding her boyfriend in bed with another woman. She needs a break and sanctuary comes in the form of Rosemont, a gorgeous estate in California promising rest and relaxation. <gasps> That sounds amazing. Then she meets the owner's equally gorgeous grandson, ex-hockey player and current recluse, Lucian Osman. And she sees her own pain and yearning reflected in his eyes. Oh, interesting. He's charming when he wants to be, but also secretive and gruff. Oh, gruff. With protective walls as thick as Emma's own. Despite a growing attraction, they avoid each other. But then there's an impromptu nighttime skinny dip and Lucian's luscious homemade tarts. <gasps> And cream cakes start arriving at Emma's door, tempting her to taste life again. In trying to stay apart, they only grow closer. Ooh. And their broken pieces just might fit together and make them whole. Oh, this sounds so good. Yeah. I mean, they all sound so good. This is going to be really hard. I know I always say that. <laughs> And last but not least, another L. Kennedy, actually, The Deal. It's off campus, number one. It got a 4.26 on Goodreads. She's about to make a deal with the college bad boy. I'm not usually into bad boys, but we'll see. Hannah Wells has finally found someone who turns her on, but while she might be confident in every other area of her life, she's carting around a full set of baggage when it comes to sex and seduction. If she wants to get her crush's attention, she'll have to step out of her comfort zone and make him take notice. Even if it means tutoring the annoying childish cocky captain of the hockey team in exchange for a pretend date oh pretend date gotta love it and it's going to be oh so good all garrett graham has ever wanted is to play professional hockey after graduation but his plummeting gpa is threatening everything he's worked so hard for if helping a sarcastic brunette make another guy jealous will help him secure his position on the team He's all for it. But when one unexpected kiss leads to the wildest sex of both their lives, oh my, it doesn't take long for Garrett to realize that pretend isn't going to cut it. Now he just has to convince Hannah that the man she wants looks a lot like him. Mommy. Yes. <gasps> Look. <gasps> Look. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. <gasps> Okay, I'll see you in just a minute. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to read the first chapter of oh, each, no. report back to you, and then we're gonna pick our favorite. I'll see you in a minute with the first chapter of the first book.
still have this up, so I thought I'd use it one more time. Not gonna stay much longer. I just finished the first chapter of A Favor for a Favor by Helena Hunting, and it definitely has a lot of potential. We've got our poor heroine, whose name I have forgotten, and I read the synopsis and they don't even mention her name. <laughs> so our heroine, as she shall be known, she just walked in on her boyfriend with someone else. So she has left him. She's looking for a place to stay, and her brother, who is out of town, is letting her stay at his apartment, I guess. He isn't there very often because he travels. He's an NHL hockey player. And so she's going to be going up there. This was hilarious, very realistic. I liked Helena Hunting's writing very much. I almost just said Helen Hunt. <laughs> love her. I'm really liking this story. We've got, his name is Bishop. I know that because it's the name of the next chapter. Oh my gosh. And the narrators are fantastic. He is terrible. <laughs> or I think it's the fact that he realizes that this is some woman who's trying to, looks like, break into the apartment across from his. And apparently women are always trying to do that. They throw themselves at hockey players. And so he's very distrustful, distrustful, distrusting of her. And uh, yeah, she he actually tells her this is terrible. And I quote, he calls her face a boner killer, which is just lovely. So it's going to be interesting. I guess we're doing an enemies to lovers romance here. Looks potentially good. And I love both the narrators. So this would be really fun to listen to. to tell you about what I was listening to while I was doing this, which was the first chapter of Him by Serena Bowen and L. Kennedy. So we have our hero. I'm still not quite sure what his name is because it's being told in first person, but he's on a hockey team. He's quite good. And they're about to face off against another team. They're looking at tapes. They're trying to figure things out. Before they start to do that, though, we learn a little bit more about our hero, one of our heroes. He is gay and he does not want any commitment. He doesn't want people to get too close. So he actually prefers to fool around with guys that are curious because if he is with another gay guy then he's afraid that that person will want a relationship. He wants someone that's going to completely ignore him the following day, which is so sad, but that's how it is. And he's happy with that. But his world is about to be rocked because as he's looking at the tape of the opposing goalie, he realizes that this is the guy that used to be really good friends with him and something big happened. We don't know what, but this is gonna be a problem. So talk about enemies to lovers. I mean, this is gonna be big. I really like the writing a lot. She's really funny and quick. This is book two of the Bergman Brothers series, as I probably already mentioned. The reason I'm mentioning it again is because there is quite a bit of talk about the other two characters that obviously are newly together in this first chapter. And they're from another book. I was sure they're from another book because it's like, why are we getting front loaded with all this information about another couple that's not even our main couple? And I'm like, oh, it's because they were in the first book. So obviously the author wants you to have read these in order because if you're coming in without having read the first one as I did a lot of this chapter sort of falls flat although I did love how the hero of I'm guessing the first book has hearing aids I love that she's so inclusive. So anyway, our heroine is super grumpy. She does it to keep everyone else at arm's length, however. She's like a PR person for a hockey team. And meanwhile, this guy, Ren, is like the complete opposite of her. Opposites attract, anyone? And he is just so sweet, always smiling, just a lovely human being. And she bumps into him and he's half-dressed in the locker room and uh, sparks begin to fly. I have a feeling he's already been interested in her based on the way he's always treated her, but she seems to have just discovered him. And now the girlfriend of his brother is inviting our heroine to spend more time with them. So it looks like a good book and someone's calling me. I was putting away laundry while listening 
going to make it sweet. The first chapter, actually it's the prologue. I almost started listening to chapter one, but I've made that mistake in the past and then I end up giving way more time to the other books and I didn't want to do that. Uh, so yes, I only listened to the prologue and now I'm hiding so I can tell you about it. <laughs> I'm in my daughter's room. This is her nursery. Although she's, she just turned three, it's crazy. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. O-M-G. This might be it, guys. This might be it. I'm amazed at the writing. So we've got a hockey player. He's talking about how much he loves hockey. I can't do it justice to describe the writing here, the way he de describes playing hockey and the ice and what it means to him and how basically he feels like a god when he's on the ice. It's so gorgeous. You really feel what this guy feels. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then you get a sense that maybe all isn't perfect in his land because he's had concussions and he can tell that something's not quite right in his brain. His section of the prologue ends with him getting slammed into the glass during a game. What's it called a game? <laughs> so bad. I need to learn about sports by a six foot two, 260 pound guy. Anyway, he said that basically everything ends there for him. Then we head to Emma, whose name I did remember, and she is talking about how her life has basically ended too. She was this great actress in a show that was super duper popular. And at the end of the first season, they're doing a table read and she discovers that her character is getting killed off. It's like Game of Thrones. She's just so devastated. And so she she goes home early and her boyfriend is in bed with the waitress who waited on them two days ago. So that's over now too. It was humorous. It was very enthralling, compelling, all the wing words. I really enjoyed this a lot. So this might be my top contender right now. I've got one more that I need to read tomorrow and then we'll make the final decision. This is gonna be really hard. cold right now when I'm hanging out with my gal on the backyard and I thought oh my gosh this is a great time to record so I finished the audio oh I finished the audio of the deal by L Kennedy and it's one chapter obviously I read the first chapter and it's broken up in half in Hannah's perspective and Garrett's perspective Hannah is a music student and she is in an ethical philosophy class or philosoph philosophical ethics I think it's called and she's aced the latest midterm, whereas just about everybody else has flunked it. So everybody's got daggers for the professor, the new professor who used to hand out A's like candy, apparently. Mama. Yes. I'm just telling somebody something. I'm telling some people something cool. One moment. Anyway, she's good. And Hannah is desperately in love with this guy. I think his name is Justin. He's a football player. And at that point, I had to look online. I'm like, wait, is this a football romance? And I picked the wrong one. But Garrett's a hockey player. Let's talk about Garrett. So he is failing and he's in huge trouble because if he doesn't maintain a C plus average, I think, or maybe a C minus average, he's not allowed to play hockey. There's the hockey. And uh, he really needs to. Now, Garrett. I don't know if I'll pick this one because this is the first time I'm saying that too. So it's almost good because it's been a really hard uh, choice up to this point. He's kind of a jerk. <laughs> he talks about, he refers to the girls at, at college as chicks and how they're all interested in his word that rhymes with chick. And I'm like, oh, that's lovely. And then he, he doesn't know Hannah's name. He keeps thinking her name begins with an M, which actually was kind of humorous, but he he's basically focused on her rear as he's leaving class and also lamenting the fact that he's not gonna be able to play hockey anymore. He just seems like kind of a jerk. And uh, when Mom, he bumps into her, yes. I am stuck. You're stuck? Okay, I'll help you. Okay, I'm back. When he helps her pick up her things, he realizes she aced the midterm. So he wants her help. She's too busy to help. End scene. Now gonna be decision time next. So let's find out what we decide. It's a chilly winter day and I'm just sort of straightening up after 
after a three year old birthday party that we just had. But it's exciting right now too, because it is time to decide which hockey book we're going to read. Now I said this probably when I did my small town romance a couple months ago that I would be excited to read any of these books. This is even more challenging this time because I want to read all of these. So I'm picking one because I'm sticking to it. But if some of these end up on my wrap ups in the coming months, do not be at all surprised because they all seem amazing. The one I'm the least excited about, I will be honest, is The Deal by L. Kennedy because I just, I wasn't a big fan of Garrett. I'll say that. So I'm going to knock that one out. Thank heavens there was one that I was a little less enamored with because I was so interested in all of these. Always Only You. I'm also going to knock that one out. I've heard such great things in the Bergman Brothers series as a whole, but I'm getting the sense that it's probably best to be read in order. And since I haven't read the first one yet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to table those and start with the first one at some point this year. I definitely want to read them. A Favor for a Favor by Helena Hunting. I think I'm going to knock that one out too. It's sort of similar in terms of the guy not being the best guy. Although I realize he's kind of on the offensive because he assumes that she is a terrible person <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, he's not my favorite type of hero. So although I know it's going to get better. But again, like I'm trying to rule some of these out so I can just pick one. So I'm being nitpicky here. I also just got an arc by Helena Hunting. So I'm going to be reading her in the near future regardless. So I'm excited about that. Him by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy. I haven't read either of them yet. This looks like a really compelling first chapter. I'm really eager to see what's going to happen. It's going to be different probably from any story that I've read before. It looks really good, but I'm not sure I'm feeling like an enemies to lovers right now, but I'm the most excited about Make It Sweet by Kristen Callahan. The writing, oh my gosh, I love it. And the narrators, especially him. Can't remember his name. I used to get him confused with Zachary Weber. I need to go to Southern California in, in beautiful weather in my mind. I need a gorgeous hockey man who bakes. I just need that right now. So I'm going to pick it. Make it sweet. Making it happen. Next time you see me, I will have read it and I can tell you what I thought. Oh my gosh, I just finished. Oh, you know what? I actually woke up at three in the morning. I was going to listen to a sleep story on my call map and I was like, but I really want to know what happens. So I, cause I had like two and a half hours left in the audiobook, And so I, I didn't go back to sleep because I was so excited to see what was going to happen between Lucian and Emma. It was so good. It was really steamy just with so much emotion, which is just my favorite. I mean, I don't care about like super steamy, super spicy. But if there's a motion in it and it's like super spoony, it was so good. Along those terms, Kristen Callahan can write a man's body. It was just so good. I loved the descriptions of the food and the baking and just the way that it could be so sensual and how he tried to please her with food when he wasn't really available emotionally himself. And watching this slow burn romance, it was perfect. I loved the tension. And then when it finally broke, it was just so so good. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And the obstacles that were that they had to overcome to be together in the very end were so realistic. I loved it. I loved their conversations, just how I just, it was just perfect. It's like six stars for me. It's my first six star book. And as I'm filming this, it's January 13th, Friday the 13th. So it took me a whole 13 days to find my first favorite book of the year. <laughs> anyway, oh my gosh, it was so good. Very highly recommend. So good and swoony. Now, there's still plenty of time left in the month. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to, obviously this is about, this vlog is about to end, but I am going to read two more hockeys that I was most excited about him and a favor for a favor. I'm fine not reading the deal by L. Kennedy. Let me know if you read it, what you thought. But um, I do want to read more Chloe Lease, but I need to read the first one in that series first. I'm going to try to tackle him and a favor for a favor, which you will hopefully see in my January wrap up. This was so much fun. I love me a hockey player. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying whatever it is that you're reading, whether there's a hot hockey player in it or not. Until next time, thanks so much. Take care. Bye.